Hey guys, Dr. G here. Thanks for watching this video. Today I have a very special guest. I have Dr. Jen, Dr. Jen Esker, Dr. Jen Fit on Instagram. She's got over 400,000 followers. She's amazing. She's a former gymnast, a doctor of physical therapy, former former Pilates instructor, and the list goes on and on. The girl is amazing. How are you doing today, Jen? I'm doing great. Thank you for this. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I'm glad to have you on here. I know you just went on vacation, didn't you? Yeah, we just got back from Hawaii not too long ago. Hawaii, that's... Uh, was it? First it was time, awesome. First time going there? It was a lot of fun. No, it's... Um, I've actually been there. That was my third time, I think. Third Same time. place, though, Maui. I haven't been to other islands. I need to branch out a little, little bit more. There you go. I saw, the, I saw the amazing pictures on Instagram, so... Good yeah. for you. Good for you. A lot of stress relief. Yeah. Well, and then I... Went to Bali for two weeks before that, and then Guatemala as well. So this year has already wow. gotten started to a lot of vacationing. <laughs> Very for you. good for you. Now that I know, I know you talk a lot about breathing and stress relief. So mm -hmm. now that you went on vacation, I, I imagine your stress levels are a bit down, but maybe hectic because of the workload that you're going to be uh, facing right now after going on vacation. Right. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? How does stress influence? pain in the body oh man it's it's everything i mean when we get stressed out um something that is really kind of easy to kind of think about i usually think about the breath so if someone scares you and that puts you kind of into that stressful kind of state we immediately kind of breathe into our chest and as soon as you breathe into your chest you're telling your brain you know to turn on into that uh sympathetic nervous system so it goes into that fight flight right away and it kind of gets increases cortisol levels and those alone are going to increase your pain makes sense uh, and so if we're always kind of in this stressful state and we're breathing from our chest then we're always always telling the brain that we're in this stressful state that you're always in fight and flight that you're always going to be producing cortisol and kind of stressing that through the body so you're naturally going to be at this pain state just a lot higher all throughout the day and so if we don't learn how to take the breath out of the chest and bring it back into the diaphragm and back into um, your stomach area you're going to kind of always be in this heightened state at all times instead of getting back into that rest and relaxation instead of getting back into you know, where it just kind of naturally can shut off those those pain sensors and not make your body so stress-sensitive and heightened. Makes sense, yeah. And, then, and now that you talk about that, I see that here in the clinic, whenever I lay patients down on the table, let's say for pass, passive therapies such as E-STEM and HEAT, mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. the only time of the day that they have to relax. So for most of right. them, they actually fall asleep because they're almost stress-free for those 20, 30 minutes that they're in here. So it makes a yeah. lot of sense. Now, what, what do you do as far as uh, helping your patients out whenever they're too stressed out? Or do you go through some questions to relax or to help them relax or some sort of treatment? What do you recommend for them? Um, I really recommend just opening space for them. And so that means I'm going to just be opening, asking open-ended questions, how they're doing, what's going on in their lives, allowing them to talk, allowing them to open up and feel a space that is safe for them to be able to open up and to be able to talk and and see what's coming up for them. Because a lot of times they're not able to even connect with someone or talk about these things. And they don't know me, like they know me well enough to feel safe, but they don't know me, like I don't know their past, I don't know history, so they have a safe space where they could just divulge all this information. And so it's really important for me to be able to open up space for them, to be able to feel like they can just have this safe space to open up to release i get a lot of clients that just cry on the table because we're getting into those areas we're getting into where pain is really coming from a lot of times it can be emotional especially when it's chronic pain or stress related and you're like oh someone is after allowing me to like release the stress and cry and be open and be vulnerable and and when we're able to hit that and then we go into the breath work and i'm fairly gently like just working on them like believe me my touch is not gonna what's gonna be taking away your pain it's really what's coming from inside and so when they're able to just breathe into their bodies I had one lady she was been in back pain for years and years and she's on the table we're working on her we're working on the breath and all of a sudden she's like oh my god I have no pain and I was like yeah but 
that had nothing to do with me. Like me rubbing your legs is not what's getting out of pain. It's you. Like do you feel like you can do that? And so getting someone to just even in that moment feel like, wow, I just relieve pain in my own body. That is, it's so powerful and just uh, opening the space for them to be able to do that. It certainly is, and that's a good thing about being able to treat a person, for example, as you as a physical therapist, that you see a person more than just five minutes. Let's yeah. say some, uh, if a person goes to see a doctor, they wait, they wait for a long period of time in the waiting room, and they're probably in and out in five minutes. So yeah. you, uh, being a physical therapist, you spend more time with them, you're able to talk to them more, find out the source yeah. of their pain. So that's an advantage I see that, uh, that uh, treating people uh, mm -hmm. on a consistent basis is uh, something that you actually get to help more people with. Yeah. And, that, and that, that's what uh, one of the questions that I was going to ask, but you answered it in that, uh, in that same <laughs> question. So, uh, yeah. You got ahead of me, but good, good answer. I love the information. <laughs> now, I know yeah. you deal a lot with mobility. You're the mobility mm -hmm. queen. You have uh, the mobility <laughs> method program. And uh, make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be giving one away today. And it's a program that's been helping a lot of people. And uh, Jen has been successfully hitting the masses through everywhere in the world with, with her digital program. So make sure you stick to that. Stick around to the end of the video for that. Now, Jen, um, what is the difference between mobility and flexibility? Now, before we answer that question, what is mobility? Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah. I mean, mobility is just the ability to move around a joint or move your body freely in space, right? But the difference between being able to, to freely move and have that, that mobile area between flexibility is that flexibility is going to be more passive. So when we think about flexibility, we're thinking stretching, breathing into it, relaxing. It's a passive way to increase range of motion. Okay. Mobility is now then being able to take that passive range and make it active. So not only can I do a hamstring stretch, but I can stand up and actively bring my leg all the way up. So it's the active ability to take that range and move it freely. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now, on my website, on my channel, we talk a lot about back pain and sciatica. Now, what do you think are some ways that people can improve their mobility, whether it's in the hips mm -hmm. or in the low back area, to help with low back pain? What would you mm -hmm. suggest for that? I honestly, I always go back to breath. Like, people probably get annoyed with how much I talk about it. <laughs> and I actually have a section in my mobility program that is centered just on different types of kind of opening up the diaphragm and getting into the breath a little bit. Really basic, but but tapping back into that to at least have an awareness about it again. And really, we can start to, to more efficiently affect the way that we're breathing, then we're naturally taking down restrictions within the body. So a lot of people are like, I'm chronically tight. I've had tight hamstrings my entire life, and that's just who I am. Well, have you tapped into the breath, though, and relaxing that nervous system? Because a lot of times when the nervous system is really like locked up and tense and tight, it's not going to trust your body to be able to relax and open up and, and get into these different stretches. So I always say it goes back to the breath. If we can make the breath more efficient and more effective, then we're going to start to affect the entire body as a whole, especially mobility and flexibility. And so I always go back to that first. And then, when, especially when we're talking about like sciatica, I'm like, well, why are we just looking at the back? We're probably missing what's going on at the hip area, like you kind of talked about. So are the hips even moving the way that they're supposed to? This is our hinge joint. This is what we're supposed to be bending from, moving from. Um, and if you're chronically locked up in your hamstrings, you're probably not bending from your hips properly. And if you're, and you might not be twisting and living in this transverse plane of motion, which is that rotation which we live around, but if our internal or external rotation is limited in the hips, then again, it's probably going to shoot up the back and go into that low back area. So really getting people to think about pain in a different way as opposed to just this is where I have pain, this is where I need to work, this is what I'm focusing on, but now getting people to broaden the scope and say, okay, let me step back and see what else is restricted that could be causing the pain in this area. So that's really what I'm doing with the mobility method. 
Yeah, I completely agree with you. I know there's times where people, for example, have knee pain, but their pain may be actually caused by a problem either on the foot, the ankle, or the hip joint. And the yeah. knee just happens to be in the middle. So it's right. taking the brunt of the problem. Exactly, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Now, I noticed you do a lot of Instagram challenges on your Instagram page, which, uh, by the way, uh, for the viewers, it's at DocGenFit. Okay, mm -hmm. now can you tell me a little bit more about that and how it encourages people to go ahead and start moving and, and start seeing that they have so much potential and that they can actually get rid of their pain? Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that? Yeah, so for the challenges, they're really, they're pretty, what I would say is pretty basic. It's like two mobility exercises a day, but really behind that, and even that alone, some people are like, oh my God, my shoulder pain went away. I'm like, really, a week? <laughs> I'm just doing that. Like, it's not, it's, it's not that elaborate, but um, what I think is really getting people to drop back into the mindset is I... I initiate the challenge always with a video talking about why this is also important to me. And really that goes back to appreciating my body and being able to tap back into that because as a PT and going to school, you do work with people who have cerebral palsy, junior rheumatoid arthritis, amputees. Like you work with all these different types of people who to others would look at as limitations. Yeah. But they're yet they're doing so much for their bodies. Like one guy who has cerebral palsy that I saw, um, he's living in a wheelchair, getting himself down and up on his wheelchair, uh, living all alone. You know, it, it's painful. It looks painful to, to see him getting down and putting on his shoes and socks. It takes like 20 minutes for some task that we, we take for granted often. And yet he does it. He's using his full capable body to be able to just live on his own. And when he got too big to pull himself back on front of his wheelchair, he started swimming so he could lose weight. I mean, it's so inspiring. And so I talk about this and I say, you have this capable, able moving body. Like you might not have the range of motion you want right now, but you have the capability to be able to gain it. So why aren't you using that full capable body that you have been so gratefully blessed with? Like, this is what we have. This is our opportunity to take advantage of it. And reminding people, like, you brush your teeth every day so that you can avoid the dentist and not have any cavities and root canals and all these things. Why aren't we not moving into our bodies and getting that mobility first? So that we're preventing pain and injury. So you don't have to go to people like us and, and get fixed all the time. Makes complete sense. If you notice uh, babies, their their movement, their mobility is great. And then as we get older, we start losing that for whatever reason. I guess life yeah. happens for most people. But, you know, everybody has a little bit of time during the day to do something to mm -hmm. better themselves. Yes. So that's good. Now, I, I, uh, I deal a lot, like I said, with people with back pain, sciatica. And sometimes these people don't want to move because it may cause more pain. Now, what's a, what's a tip that you can tell somebody that is apprehensive about moving mm -hmm. and how to get them to start slowly and then eventually build up to more movement so that they can actually heal themselves? What would yeah. you suggest for that? Um, I would, again, go back to breathing <laughs> and putting one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, getting into whatever position is comfortable for you. So whether that's sitting supported, whether that's laying down and having your knees supported by bolsters or whatever it may be, getting into a position that is comfortable for you, that you feel less pain with, and starting to tap it back into the, the more of the, the lower rib cage breathing rather than the chest breathing and seeing if you can relax the chest while you're just breathing gently. Not pushing out the stomach. I don't like to say belly breathing anymore because I've had a lot of patients then come in and they're like forcing their stomach out. I'm like, oh, it's not the idea here. <laughs> um, so like lower ribcage breathing, getting that expansion happening lower rather than higher. Um, so more so, of a mind, body, and soul connection so yeah, that you can relax. Mm -hmm. and, and getting back in, and relaxing in your body and remembering that you're pro like our bodies are so resilient. They're so amazing. They heal themselves. They're they're amazing. And so you moving into these little things, it might feel painful at first, but I promise you, it's it's an extra sensitivity right now. And 
slowly over time, you move a little bit more, a little bit more, it's going to get better. And also, like, I don't like, you know, oh, you you can't bend from the spine, you can't twist, you can't, like, the more that, if you are going to someone and they're saying all these things that you can't, can't, can't do, I would say run. Right. <laughs> because the more that we tell a client or a patient or the more that you get in your own head, well, I have this disc injury, so I'm not allowed to bend forward. I'm not allowed, like the more that we restrict and we tell the brain, you can't do this, you can't do this, the more that you're going to tell, the brain is going to tell the body, this doesn't feel safe, this doesn't feel safe, I'm, I'm afraid, it's going to hurt. And you're going to increase the pain levels just by all this mindset stuff. Right. So make sure that you're with someone who's going to encourage movement, who's going to encourage you to get back, it's going to be okay, it might be a little painful, but we're going to work through it together, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yep, I agree. I'm a big proponent of that for disc injuries, especially because the disc mm -hmm. is in a vascular structure and it requires yeah. movement to heal. So yeah. that's, that's, that's one thing I tell people all the time. You have to start moving. Bed rest is not going to really help you too much. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, sticking with the movement here, what would you uh, tell somebody that's trying to start going to the gym, but they lack mobility, so that lack of mobility can increase the chances of getting injured? So mm -hmm. again, you would suggest starting with mobility, maybe look into something like your program, the mobility method, or what are some basics, mm -hmm. uh, basic exercises or basic movements that you would recommend for somebody, let's say, that's, that has restrictions in the shoulders, as a lot of people do, since they're, most mm -hmm. people are sitting down on a, on a desk all day and their shoulders are rounded forward, they lack mobility. What's a right. good way to start? Um, I think you, you need to get in, so whether that's dropping in and seeing a, a therapist or working with a, a lot of trainers are actually pretty good at like kind of seeing what should be normal. But I would say get into your therapist, even if you're not in pain right now, just to be assessed, just to get a preventative treatment plan. Um, and pay, you know, the money for one-time fee. It's not like your body means a lot. It's okay to like drop in, even if your insurance won't pay. You know, I always want to hammer that. And your body is worth it. Worth more than those pair of shoes. Go in for your body and get just get checked and just see. Because a lot of times we're going to be able to assess and see. Okay, well, the shoulders is restricted this way, but it's actually, you know, your your pelvic tilt is, is making your rib cage tilt backwards, which is making your shoulders run forward. So if we don't address, if you don't start addressing your whole body and you're just focusing on shoulder stretching, you might be, you might never get to where you want to get to. You know, you might, you might always have this limitation, and and you might not be able to fully get there. So working with someone who can kind of see the whole picture first and then be like, here are the five things you need to work on based on based on going from the feet all the way up the body and it's going to help the whole chain of you. I think that's so beneficial for the body and that's kind of what the mobility method does as well. Is it, it, it's a, there's a self-assessment tool so that you can kind of go in and see what range of motion should look like and where yours is and then find the exercises that work best for your body. Because... It, it really is important for us to look at the body as a whole. It's all connected. It's all, you know, chained together, which is why we we're talking about how like, knee pain is related to ankle or hip or anything like that. So, again, shoulder restrictions can be at your hip. It could be your back. And so looking at the whole picture to really then start to open everything up is so crucial, so important. And if you're just going to load weight and hope and pray that it's going to open up on its own, probably not the good way. And then you're going to really come see us because you're going to be injured and in pain. pain. <laughs> very true. Very true. I, I myself, I, I know I've gotten injured in the past. My shoulders have hurt just because of the way that I'm lifting stuff incorrectly. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with my lack of mobility. And I actually, um, I noticed I had a, lot, a lack of mobility when I purchased your handstand program. When I purchased that, uh -huh. uh, when doing the handstands with the shoulders, that's it's yeah. tough. It looked you make it look easy, but it's very very tough <laughs> if you like the mobility. So I've been slowly improving, yeah. and I'm slowly getting the handstands. Amazing. Yep. Now, what what areas of the body does your program cover? Does it cover the whole body, or is it just certain areas? It's really the whole body. Um, I had avoided some areas for a, a little bit because, like, for me, my mindset is 
Well, if you're having a lot of neck tension, a lot of neck pain, it's probably because you're not opening up in the chest, you're not opening up in the back. So it's like once you start to work on these areas, the whole rest is going to be like, yeah, it's going to start to get better. Yeah. Um, but I, a lot of people were like wanting those neck stretches, so I added them in. <laughs> um, so it really, it, it goes through the entire body. There's a headache relief. There's, um, there's the breathing module. There's uh, one of a, a like foam rolling 101 okay. because uh, just to kind of give you a basis of what foam rolling is, what how it's going to get back, uh, how it's going to be most beneficial into your body, and why you don't need to smash into things when you're foam rolling, and then um, and then it it goes through a self screening, a neck module, back module, hip module, shoulder module, ankle module, feet module, wrist module. And on top of that, there's, if you're already in back pain, here's a suggested routine. Obviously not your routine. I would rather someone else make up their own. But here's a suggestion. Knee pain. Here's a suggestion. I mean, there's everything under the sun for one payment, one time. That's excellent. And that's, uh, I'm going to give one away today, so make sure you guys stick around to the end. And uh, any supplements that you would recommend, Jen, as far as pain relief or maybe to get people to relax a little bit more, less stress, any natural ways to do that that you would recommend my favorite is turmeric and not just taking turmeric one time but making it part of your daily life so whether that's kind of implementing it into coffee or uh, your food or tea or anything like that and um, my girlfriend she actually she is she makes a really good brand golden glow and the reason I like it is because she's done so much research behind it and Turmeric is only processed within your body when it's activated with other things like uh, black pepper. pepper yeah. So like the turmeric pills, they just don't work. And those are really popular for a long time, but it doesn't get the anti-inflammatory effect into your body. So she's actually like continuously doing research, adding it with charcoal, adding it with all, all these other things that are really beneficial. So hers, I like to take as a, as a daily supplement and just in like a turmeric latte or tea or anything like that. Excellent. Now, any other suggestions for people? What would you tell them uh, for them to start getting more more uh, active in their life? Is there any tip that you recommend for people to start? Let's say if somebody's under a lot yeah. of pain. I know you said start with mm -hmm. a breath. Now, once you get calmed down, what, what other tip can you give them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I definitely, I would say it doesn't have to look a certain way. So it looks however it is best for your body individually. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend a half hour doing mobility exercises every day because believe me, I don't even have a lot of time for that. But that maybe that means you find the one mobility or exercise that you love doing when you first wake up or the one that you love doing when, before you're going to do this workout or the one you love doing right before you go to bed. So if Imagine if you found one in the morning, one at work, one before you worked out, one after you worked out, and one before you went to bed. That all takes like two minutes at a time, and you just spread it out all throughout your day to make it functional and work for you. Well, now you just did five exercises without that much time or that much effort. So that's why I would say it gets to fit into your, your life, your plan, however that looks to you. I don't. Can you do it before a workout? Yes. Can you do it after a workout? Yes. Can you do it first thing in the morning? Yes. Can you like there's no one one perfect way. There's no it just just start. Just get it done. Just begin. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. I hadn't thought about it. Many people think that going to the gym or to their workout area for just one time of the day is all they have to do. Right. Or maybe they don't have time for that. But yeah, splitting it right. up throughout the day is a good idea to get it done. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody's got 24 hours. Somebody, you got to find time for to get better. Yeah, so exactly. Now, and if you care about your body, you want you want to be able to lift your kids, your grandkids. You want to play. You want to be active. You want to live this life. Then yeah. start taking care of it. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Now the giveaway we're going to give away is the program, the mobility method which was created by Doc Jen Fit, and you can get that at painfreeinstitute.net slash mobility. So get to that page, read the rules so that you can get a, a copy or you can get entered into the drawing for a free copy of the mobility method. Any last words, Jen? Um, 
I don't think so. I think, uh, you know, I think we touched on a lot of amazing points, but I really appreciate you bringing me on and having me uh, speak to your audience. And I hope that people could find value out of it and just start moving and being thankful for this amazing body that we have. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. And we'll catch you again some other time. Take care. Thank you.